How's it going, everybody? It's great to see all of you again, especially you, one of my favorite viewers. Uh, today, I wanted to talk a bit about programming and specifically the different things I've learned over the years. I personally started programming when I was around 18 and I had first gone to university. I had my first little bit of exposure to real programming uh, before I had used like Scratch, if you guys are familiar with that, but I had never really done much real programming. And so this was kind of my first exposure. And coming at programming at a bit of a later age, and when I say later, I mean 18 to sort of in your 20s, uh, you tend to be faced with a lot of uh, confusion and a lot of things that you want to learn really quickly because you're kind of at that point where you're soon going to want to get a job if you're interested in this sort of topic. And so I found myself uh, very confused and not really quite sure where to look and so I wanted to share some of the findings I've had over the years some of the questions that I faced when I was just starting out and that I kind of wish that I had known earlier on Hopefully this video will help you guys avoid these mistakes that I made when I started now before we get into the video I just wanted to give a big shout out to the sponsor of today's video brilliant when it comes to learning, something we all know deep down is that the best way to do it is to get your hands dirty and get involved this is what I love about Brilliant. Brilliant is an online, hands-on learning platform that you guys can use to interactively evolve your knowledge in over 60 different courses. Brilliant has courses covering math, science, computer science, and more with in-depth features on each of them. I've talked about it before, but I highly recommend the Predicate Logic courses and the Logic 2 course. I think all of them are amazing. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash Gavin Freeborn. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Now jumping into the video, I wanted to talk about the first thing that I learned, that particularly being that learning isn't linear. And what I mean by that is that learning is more like a logarithmic uh, graph. It's not just a straight line. You don't like start learning at 18 and you learn more and more every single year. The real fact of the matter is, is that while you will go up in what you're learning, you eventually start to plateau and you're eventually going to hit a point where you're no longer learning at the same level as you were when you first started. It's very much limited by that. And this is really important for those of you that are coming at this from an older age. If you're just starting and you're a little bit older and you know a friend, I'm sure we all know one of these guys that's a bit of a programming madman. They've been into it since they were 10. They've been programming since seemingly the day they were born. Uh, and they seem to just have this huge leg up on you and you don't see them to even feel like you stand a chance, um, especially if you're trying to compete against someone like that for a job. And the real fact of the matter is, is that while they've been learning for a long time, if you're starting at an older age, you're not at the biggest disadvantage that you would expect yourself to be at. Like I said before, learning isn't linear. They haven't been learning at a crazy rate ever since they were 10. They've eventually started to hit a point where they can't really learn too much more and they have to put quite a lot of effort into learning a new topic and finding something new to learn. And so you can catch up to these sort of guys eventually. You're not as far behind as it may seem. Uh, that isn't to say that they don't have a leg up at all. Like right out of the gate, you're obviously going to be behind them. But knowing these people isn't a bad thing. Working with them, which I'll talk about later on, uh, gives you an opportunity to fill that gap and close it a bit more each day. Another thing I wanted to talk about is the fact that even though you're a bit behind, you also don't have to really worry about feeling as far behind right out of the gate as you might think because while they will probably know quite a bit from the last like decade there's a lot of new things especially the more that you get towards web and cutting edge technology that they probably haven't gotten a chance to learn because it didn't exist back then and so you have potential there as well to further your learning and get even past closing that gap and getting ahead in some ways um, that's just a, another point of view to bring up once again, this, this sort of a situation of be, feeling like you're just behind everybody else makes it a little bit difficult. And so I just kind of wanted to let you guys know that you're not as far behind as you might think you are. Now, the next thing that I wanted to talk about is very important for people that are starting at an older age. I myself, like I said before, I started when I was 18. And even then, I was very, very beginner level. It took me a while to get even relatively competent in programming and that is contradictory to things that i have learned it's that you don't need to learn at all right out of the gate a really common thing at least for me that i faced as someone coming from electrical engineering where you kind of learn a lot of things from the ground up um, to some extent you could argue that that's not exactly true but that's up for debate a very often thing that you want to do is know how you go from whatever high abstraction you're at now all the way down to the very bottom down to a simple circuit 
And while this is great for kind of discovering new things and starting to learn computing, I found that when I tried to do this right at the start of my learning, I eventually started to kind of slow things down and have a lot of trouble actually understanding any of the higher level abstractions. And so while long term, I think it's great to investigate these lower level features, I think it's important to kind of try and abstract things in your mind. You don't need to know all the way down to the circuitry. Maybe, if anything, most programmers don't even really need to learn down to the level of assembly. If you can read assembly and understand the basic idea of it, that's probably all pretty much any programmer really needs to understand. Once again, that's not saying that you don't need to learn these things. I think it's very valuable to learn these things, but I find that a lot of people, including myself, can get very dug down into the weeds and it can kind of halt our progress on actually learning anything that's useful. Now, the second learning outcome that I had over the years that I wanted to talk about was getting to learn from other people. This is what I talked about just a second ago. Go and meet other people. Go and talk to other programmers. Get to know other people uh, in any way that you can. So there's a few different ways you could do this. One would be to join a programming community of some sorts. Um, there's tons of them out there, uh, especially those that are more technically focused to the extent where you can like still ask questions. You don't really want one that's just rambling and doesn't really doesn't really cover anything new. But the big thing that you get out of this is you get an opportunity to both ask questions in a human, very normal way and kind of follow up questions and kind of get more interaction with other programmers. You get to learn how other people think, which is very important. You get to learn about collaboration uh, as well as taking advantage of the opportunity to answer other people's questions. Uh, one of the best ways to learn is to teach. I'm sure a lot of us have heard this before. Uh, and it's very important in programming because if we cannot describe what we're thinking, it's very difficult to work in teams. And that is a huge part of programming, especially when it comes to like a programming interview. If you have to write a program and they're going to be watching you trying to explain your code, the best way to seem and stand out as a very intelligent individual is to get time explaining your programs and your code to other people. It can really help your chances in an interview as well as just help you understand the topics. You'll be forced to deal with terminology that maybe you thought you knew it, but then all of a sudden you'll realize, oh wait, what, is there a word for this? Or maybe someone will mention another word that maybe you weren't aware of and may have never faced before if you hadn't have talked to them. And so, yeah, like I said, it's really important to get interacting with other programmers. You could do this at a meetup. You could do this on something like Discord or Matrix, or you could do this on, say, Stack Overflow. Obviously, Stack Overflow isn't exactly like the most community sort of thing out there. There's also Reddit. I guess that's another place. There's a lot of different options out there. Um, and I highly recommend you try and interact with any of these, especially ones that are a bit farther outside your circle because the more different ideas that you're exposed to, the more it will help you learn. And on that very same topic, we're gonna move on to the third thing that I have learned. Um, there's a lot of other things that I learned, obviously, but this is the third thing I wanted to talk about today, which is learning how to accept feedback from others. Now, this is obviously just a general thing in life, but programmers, especially, uh, I find seem to be the sort of people that have a lot of trouble accepting that there's another way to do something or taking feedback from other people if it's not quite what we were expecting out of the gate. A lot of the time we can learn a lot from different feedback and trying to get feedback is really important. If you say are brand new to programming, you've written up some basic stuff, maybe go onto one of these communities that I was talking about before and share your code, ask for feedback, ask for any comments people have. Even if seemingly the person's not from the same background as you, or maybe they uh, have very differing views, it's always good to hear those out and at least consider them. Like I said, I started learning about this in university and since I was in electrical engineering, my mind was very focused on that sort of application. And so when I got feedback from people that maybe came from a web background, on my C code, um, I tended to almost kind of brush it off and ignore it. But a lot of times, while the feedback may not always be exactly accurate or exactly what I want, really thinking about it and thinking, why would they give that feedback? Does that feedback mean anything? Is there something wrong with my code? Is my code more readable if I approach it this way? Trying to kind of apply these things that you hear, even if they're not from the people you'd expect to be giving you advice, you can really learn a lot, especially if you work with people a bit newer to programming or maybe they don't have the experience that you do. Hearing their feedback can actually be really interesting and really helpful for kind of hearing 
sort of how readable your code is. Sometimes as programmers, we get so locked into this idea of how our code needs to look, follow some specific guidelines. Sometimes we can end up making code that's very difficult for newcomers to read, and that's not very helpful when you're trying to onboard new programmers, or like I said before, in an interview, if you try to get way too complicated, your interviewer is gonna get a bit lost, and even if your code works, but they can't understand what's going on, you're not really gonna be getting anywhere. So listening to feedback, like I said, very important, very helpful um, in basically every facet of life, but in programming especially. Now, the fourth thing I wanted to talk about, this relates back to the very first point, was being able to accept abstraction. Abstraction is one of those things that, especially for people, like I said before, like myself, and I think a lot of other people out there, we have trouble accepting. Um, and obviously there are extremes to this. You can go way too far with abstraction. I'm sure we've all heard a million stories of like these 50 layers of inheritance in some Java program out there. Um, obviously there's too much abstraction out there sometimes, but being able to accept abstraction is something that you need to be able to do as a programmer. If you can't accept an abstraction sometimes, it's gonna make your life a lot harder. If you can't go, okay, this is passing this to here, to here, to here, and I'm gonna get this given to me. And you need to be able to accept what this is. You can't accept that this is an age. You would wanna know, okay, is you're digging down into it. Is this age thing actually just an integer or something like that? Even though you're never gonna even pull it open, you just wanna look at it. And so this is kind of a level of abstraction. Sometimes we need to learn to just accept and move with, rather than spending like four days digging into like a 2000 file code base, it doesn't really help us. Um, and this is really good for both learning how to read code, uh, because if we can accept these abstractions, we're not constantly digging down. Sometimes it is important to dig down, but you need to kind of accept these moments where you can't always dig down into the very bottom level of an entire project. Sometimes they're just too big and that's not really possible. So you kind of need to be able to accept these abstractions. This will both help you, like I said before, in following code. It also helps you write new code since you can kind of build up these abstractions, document them better um, in a similar way, as well as being able to test code. If you can accept these abstractions, you can identify where the edge bounds of your program is and what you need to be testing to make sure that you're following this abstraction rather than locking your entire code base into following one specific, like this will give this just an integer or like the lowest level possible. You wanna be able to allow these abstractions in certain cases. In some cases, you don't wanna allow these abstractions. And so it's important to kind of sort of allow these abstractions and be able to read code that's either very abstract and kind of accept them and try and reason about how they work rather than trying to dig down and figure out exactly what's getting passed around because sometimes that's just not possible. Um, and a good way to do this is to kind of look at some larger projects that are out there on the internet and kind of trying to apply this um, read the documentation, see if there's something you can do to contribute to help out the project. Um, I find that really helps me get comfortable with this sort of idea. And that's it for today, guys. I know, very quick video. This was just something I wanted to throw together, mostly because I'm coming to a point in my life where I'm starting to look back and kind of see the different things and the different mistakes that I've made over the years. Um, a lot of these things come from personal anecdotes, such as like me not really you know, giving other people a chance or maybe not listening to certain advice that I should have listened to in the first place. And so, my biggest goal here is to kind of expose you guys to these ideas and hopefully even if you didn't listen to the original person that told you these things maybe you'll hear me out and at least give them a try anyways that's it for today's video i just wanted to give a big shout out to my supporters on patreon and my supporters on github sponsors you guys mean a lot to me and all that you guys have done for me just means a ton it's made a huge difference in my life now that i am finally getting away from the time sinks that I used to have and I can actually start to use that money that you guys have given me in order to improve my setup for the channel and give you guys better more frequent content I'm just so happy um, especially thank you to the sponsors everybody thank you so much uh, anyways that's it for today guys bye and I'll see you next time